I'm holding in my hand uh, an unusual titled book. It is No More Mondays. The author is Dan Miller. He's also the author of 48 Days to the Work You Love. He is a, he's been described as a business coach, a career coach, a life coach. He holds a master's degree in psychology. And here he is today to tell us what's so bad about Mondays. We're going to find out from Nashville, Tennessee. Let's welcome Mr. Dan Miller. Dan, God bless you, sir. Thank you. So what is so bad about Mondays? It's one of the days of the week. It is indeed. It's a first day. It ought to be wonderful. And, And it really should be if people have found work that's meaningful. But we've allowed this distortion of what work is all about to creep in, even in the Christian environment, to think that it's something distasteful, it's something we just have to endure. You were Christians on a weekend, but then the rest of the week, that's just my work. And so Monday has that negative image that the rest of the world connects to it as well. So is it true that sometimes Christians disassociate their Uh, spiritual beliefs when they're at work and what's bad about that? Yeah, very much so. There's that disconnect (laughs) with that artificial dichotomy where, you know, what I do during the week doesn't really matter. That's not part of what God has called me to do. That's not part of my living out my purpose or ministry. That I do on the weekend with all those wonderful godly things. That's a disconnect that we should not be guilty of. You know, the Jewish culture had a, a wonderful integration seeing work and worship as very much the same kind of thing. So what we're doing on Thursday morning should be just as much an act of worship as what we're doing Sunday morning. Doing work with excellence speaks more to the world than anything else we can possibly do. There's an old Quaker saying, let your life speak. And it really means that, that what we do says more than what we say verbally. So doing work with excellence is the strongest ministry we can have in the world. We ought to be doing better work, better quality, better reliability and all those things than anybody else. And work gives us the opportunity to do that. Right here in this book, you talk about firing yourself. That's right. I mean, it would be bad if your boss fired you, but I never heard of firing yourself. What's that all about? Well, sometimes people get locked into just complacency or even what I call comfortable misery when it's clear they ought to move on. I mean, we used to think that you get out of school, you get the right job, stay with the right company for 30 years and get that proverbial gold watch. That really is not very admirable. You're a different person after 10 years of working in a position. It ought to prepare you for something more. We go into the next season of our lives. And some people, it would be healthy to draw a line in the sand and say, what am I prepared for? What has God positioned me for at this season of my life? And what does that mean in terms of work that I ought to move into? Um, Is it important to have a job that you enjoy doing? It is. Ultimately, I think that's a reasonable goal. Now, there are certainly seasons and valleys in our walk with the Lord where it's not going to be perfect. But also, I find people who are miserable in their jobs, they've hated it for years, they're overweight, they have migraine headaches and early stages of ulcers, and they're thinking, I just wish God would somehow speak to me. And I'm thinking, what does he have to do? You know, those things are red flags to cause us to take a fresh look. I mean, Thomas Edison said, discontent is the first necessity of progress. We ought to pay attention to those things that are obvious red flags that make us miserable, discontent. Say, okay, what should I be moving toward? Well, you touched on a really important point because uh, sometimes people think that if they're going to do God's will, then they have to be on staff at a church or paid in some (laughs) kind of a ministry like this. No, God needs us as competent physicians, attorneys, dentists, plumbers. In every area. Yes, in every area. Yesterday I answered a a question from somebody who asked, said that they were a professional now, but they really wanted to go into ministry. I thought, okay, why does it have to be a choice either or? I mean, if you are really using God's best gifts for you, that may position you to be effective (coughs) as a truck driver or as a business owner or an entrepreneur. Those are the real gifts of ministry, every bit as much as pastor, teacher, evangelist. So we have to get rid of this artificial separation that if I'm really doing something for God, then I'm not going to be working in a realistic job. 
No, yes. we don't want to do, we want to embrace people's unique giftedness in the work that they do. In my, my own life, I mean, I'm just a, a lowly author. I love to sit alone in my office in front of a computer screen, but that gives me a platform where I can affect the lives of millions of people. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I mean, I couldn't do that if I followed my dad, who was pastor of a little 40-member church. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. That was his positioning. But to do that, it would give, I would not have the, the massive impact that I'm able to have today. Now you alluded to discontent. Mm -hmm. That doesn't ha necessarily have to be a bad thing when it comes to your work. Can that be the Holy Spirit giving you a nudge to, to do something different? Absolutely. I, I think more often than not, it is that. Again, I don't think that work is something that we just have to endure, just go off to the salt mines every morning. No, it's something that ought to be fulfilling. We, we ought to be able to understand what our vocation is. That's the big picture. Career is a subset of that. Job is the smallest component. Job is what we do daily. Jobs come and go. And if we lose a job or choose to leave a job, it should not change our vocation anyway. But discontent? ought to immediately be evaluated. Is this God speaking to me? Is it time for me to move on and have a greater <laughs> impact in another way? And sometimes people confuse loyalty with just that staying under the radar. Sometimes loyalty is avoiding moving to a better season in your life. What's your definition for risk? Yeah, you know, when, when people talk about risk, and people often think that if I started my own business or if I even changed a job, or maybe if I went back to school, that that's risky. But risk is when you have no control over the outcome. So if you put the uh, title to your car down on a roll of the dice in Las Vegas, that's risk. Yes. But we reduce risk by having a careful plan. So I like to reframe it, entitle it, a seizing an opportunity or moving to a higher level of success. Because if you know you're miserable in your job and you map out what you're a candidate for and do a careful job search to take you to another position, that's not risk. If you start a business based on something you know that you do well and you've got a plan laid out, that's not risky in the way that we usually assign meaning to that word at all. I, I, I love what most people see as risky. To me, is very energizing, exciting, and engaging to move to a higher level. Solomon said, even in his most pessimistic moments, that a man find pleasure in his work, this is a gift from God. We should expect that. It tells us, you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And we have to recognize it's not selfish and egotistical to be moving to things that we enjoy in our work. It's to fully release what God has prepared us for and gifted us for. Okay, so one more time, why did you title the book, No More Mondays? Because I hear so much. We hear... Thank God it's Fridays, and then the dread of Mondays. And I want to help erase the stigma that goes with Monday. If you really are where God wants you to be and you have found fulfilling work, Mondays should be just as enjoyable as Friday. Well, I want to encourage you to get the book, No More Mondays, by Dan Miller. This can be an eye-opener. This can help you in your pursuit, your purpose, your destiny, your calling, help you to have greater insights on who you are and what you're doing, what you should be doing. And uh, there's an address on the screen. And Dan, where else can people get the book? They can get it at Lifeway, Family Christian Bookstore, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any major retailer, they've got it there. Our, our site, 48 Days to the Work You Love, we're giving, or 48days.com, we're giving some free bonuses along with that right now. But it's readily available. We're positioned to help a lot of people find hope and encouragement that they need in their work. 48days.com. What has been the feedback so far from people that have read it? We've gotten some amazing, we, we've even gotten things like you pick up where Rick Warren left off in terms of understanding our purpose, but what does that mean on Monday morning? Yeah, how do you apply it to the workplace? How do you apply it? What do you do? Sure, we want to be you know, serving the Lord, but what does that mean on Monday morning? So we're getting a lot of feedback that ties in with that very theme. And God bless you, sir. Thank, Thank you for you, writing Marcus. this insightful book.